to is the submittal of a resolution recognizing September 2023 as National Service Dog Month. And I'd ask Stephanie to come to the podium so we can have you up. And if you wanna bring everybody else up to the podium with you and Supervisor Paulding is going to read uh, the honors today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for being here. I have the unique pleasure of uh, getting to read this resolution today. It's a resolution proclaiming the month of September 2023 as National Service Dog Month in the County of San Luis Obispo. Whereas we believe in the joyful and transformative power of the human canine bond and inclusivity of all citizens. And whereas in the United States, 64 million adults and children have a disability and only 16,000 service dogs from accredited training programs exist nationwide and the need is growing. And whereas Canine Companions is a nonprofit organization that enhances the lives of people with disabilities by providing expertly trained service dogs and ongoing support to ensure quality partnerships. And whereas Canine Companions and their service dogs empower people with disabilities to lead life with greater independence by providing best in class training, ongoing follow up services, and a deeply committed community of support. And whereas National Service Dog Month aims to educate our community about the benefits of service dogs and the laws protecting them. And whereas the County of San Luis Obispo continues to work toward becoming an inclusive community in which all citizens and their service dogs are embraced. Now therefore, be it resolved and ordered that the Board of Supervisors of the County of San Luis Obispo, State of California, does hereby proclaim the month of September 2023 as National Service Dog Month in recognition and support of service dogs and the adults and children with disabilities in our community. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, board, thank you very, very much from all of us for this proclamation. Um, this is Kenya. Kenya is nine weeks old and this is where we start and it does take a village. Um, so I'm gonna hand her back. <laughs> okay. Um, so we start with a nine week old puppy. Um, the puppies are born for, through Canine Companions for Independence. Um, they're sent out to puppy raisers at about nine weeks of age. And our dedicated puppy raisers spend a lot of time, money and effort and emotion in raising these puppies before they go back for formal training at the six schools that we have across the nation. Um, our end result will be Jello and Edgar, wherever Edgar went, who is your our county facilities dog. Um, and not every dog is cut out to be a service dog. However, we have a number of different tracks for our service dogs to do. It could be a dog that is a facilities dog. It could be a dog that is ending up a therapy dog. It could be a hearing dog. Um, it could be a, a dog for the autistic spectrum. So there's a variety of things that our dogs can do. Um, and on behalf of Canine Companions, who we represent today, um, we wanna thank you for this proclamation and for, organ and for recognizing September as National Service Dog Month. Um, in San Luis Obispo County. Um, Canine Companions was first developed in Santa Rosa in 1975. We have six training centers over the country now. Um, and since the beginning of Canine Companions in Santa Rosa, we have placed 7,454 7, dogs have been provided to people in need at no cost to them. Um, we pride ourselves in being a 501c3 nonprofit and we do not charge for our dogs. We are um, professionals and volunteers who spend our time and our love in order to give something back to people who need it more than we do. Um, the journey be to become a service dog is not easy and it is a long one. Um, at eight weeks of age, like I said, they go out to puppy raisers. Our puppy raisers spend time doing exactly what we did this morning, um, taking our dogs to work with us, um, taking them to public events, um, anything that a dog might encounter as a service dog later on, it is important for us to introduce that dog to that at a very early age. Um, when the dogs are emotionally ready, they go back to the school for formal training. They have a lot of basic obedience and commands that we've taught them, but they have to be ready mentally. Um, and the majority of the dogs that get placed are over two years of age. Um, unlike some people who say they have a three month old puppy who's a service dog, 
No, they don't have a service dog. Um, these dogs take a lot of time and a lot of training in order to make them the companions that they need to be and be representing an organization out in public. Um, typically, 16 to 18 months of age is when they go back. And then, unfortunately, all of us puppy raisers have to say goodbye um, and, and hope for the best for them. Um, it is very difficult to say goodbye to a dog that you have raised for close to two years. So it's, it's a, um, a very a loving thing that our puppy raisers do. Um, some of the things that our dogs are trained to do when they go back, picking up dropped items, um, helping people get undressed, uh, pulling baskets, opening doors, turning on lights, um, just a very wide variety of things that our dogs can do. Our facility dogs that are out in facilities can help with um, physical therapy, can help in the court systems. Um, emotional support is a big part of our canine companions. Um, we also work with adults with auditory disorders. So we have a hearing dog program also. Um, and we have a PTSD program also that's been uh, going on for about two years now. So our dogs have a number of different ways that they can um, go. And we don't know as puppy raisers when we start out with a dog like Kenya, we have no idea which direction that dog will go when it goes back for training. So we prepare them for everything that we possibly can. Let's see. Um, we have a lot of professional health care workers um, that are working with our service dog program also um, so that we understand better as dog trainers and puppy raisers what the needs are going to be of the people that receive our dogs. It's important that we understand what those needs are in order to pass that information and that training off onto the dogs that we are raising. Um, upon graduation, there's an annual follow-up with our school to make sure that the dogs are doing well with their new owners and their new handlers. Um, service dogs typically work about 10 years. Um, it is a very stressful job. Um, and so we do have to watch and sometimes we have to tell them they need to retire. <laughs> Term limits, I guess we might say, I'm not sure. Um, so as you can imagine, it takes a lot of people and volunteers um, to make a canine companion successful. We have 4,700 um, active volunteers nationwide, 1,292 volunteer puppy raisers, 138 volunteer breeder caregivers, and then the staff at our six schools. Um, our team here at San Luis Obispo County is very proud of the work we do, and we thank you all for recognizing our organization and the work of the certified um, service dogs that do for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional public comment? Seeing none, we'll close this out and bring it back to the board. Supervisor Paulding. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Stephanie, for being here and all the volunteers and puppy raisers. We really appreciate what you do for the community and for those that can use these wonderful doggies in the future. Um, I know that one of my neighbors, Viera, uh, is always uh, doing her business and my dog walks by and observes the process. And then I have to mention one funny thing, though. You have the most friendly cat that my dog has ever met. And I don't know how that works in the training process, but my dog always approaches and just kind of, you know, does the sniff and wonders what's going on. And your cat is totally cool. So anyway, maybe that's a byproduct of all the training, but thank you all for, for being here and for what you do, seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Arnold. Yep. So I want to thank you for being here too. I'm a, I'm a big believer in the human canine bonding that you talked about. And uh, so I, so I, and we can see today um, how special these dogs are and how much, how much good they do for people. Um, we, it was really a special treat for all of us. I think it, it would be a unanimous decision to say we really enjoyed um, having you here this morning. So thank you. Supervisor Ortiz Lake. Thank you so much as well to, uh, to really highlighting the difference of what a service dog is and the intense um, training dedication that you all have in order to prepare the animal to actually do all of the things that you, you highlighted. I mean, it's remarkable. And I, and I really, I, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate that so much because I see where people, <laughs> 
you know, we all have emotional support from our animals, but they use it so casually as opposed to what's happening here and why that is so critical to have that education about that, what that's all about. And so just wanna thank you for coming and, and sharing and educating us. Thank you, Supervisor Gibson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is impressive what you do uh, and the, the love that you extend uh, both to our canine friends and the folks who then benefit from them is extraordinary. And I appreciate uh, our, my time with you today uh, as your dogs radiate a, a calm that is rare in this world. <laughs> we thank you. I would add too, I'm, I'm amazed how calm they are. So thank you for your perseverance over two years of, of training them. I know that that is, and it's gotta be really, really tough to let them go to, to do their service. So thank you for all you do for our community. With that, uh, we are concluding this.